Coming up on Coyotes Insider, General Manager Bill Armstrong stops by for a visit. We'll check out the plays of the month and find out why Mullet Arena is the place to be. So this is it, the final installment of our Coyotes Insider here on Valley Sports. I'm Todd Walsh. We're hanging out at the Coyotes practice facility at Ice Den Scottsdale. We've got lots to digest, so let's get to this. We can take a look at the season that was, the arena that is, and the future that lies ahead. The architect of that future and the present is Coyotes General Manager Bill Armstrong. And just like we started the season, we sat down with him once again. Bill, if you could, please follow me on this little journey here. Um, you've been a part of the sport your whole life, a player, yeah. assistant coach, a scout, and now the general manager. To me, seasons in pro sports are like years of our lives. Yeah. They have their own story. You can't ever repeat them. So in that sense, what did you learn about your group this year? Well, I, I think our group, you know, took a step and that was the biggest thing is when I addressed them in training camp, I said, we can feel sorry for ourselves. We can, you know, feel like this guy got traded. There's this guy's gone. And where are we at right now is, is what counts. And can we take that next step, you know? Um, and the group really bought into that. And I thought the coaches did a marvelous job at, at developing these players, putting them in good situations to play. And if you look at our team, the majority of players, uh, you know, have taken a step. Um, and now it's fun for the fans, I think, too, because you can go to a game and say, oh, I, I see that guy. He's a good player. He's, he's coming. There, there's some hope coming here. Um, and I think, you know, as an organization behind the scenes, from the salary cap to the draft picks, we're a healthy organization. Um, we, we have gutted the backside of it and, and made it healthy. And now it's time to take another step by adding some players either through the draft, through free agencies, in any way we can. At the start of the season, you said a couple of things that have stuck with me. You promised that after the most daunting task I've ever witnessed, the schedule, that yeah. it would flip. And it was about surviving to get to that second half of the schedule yeah. at home. And it happened, didn't it? Yeah. It, you know, it was good for our group. I thought our group became uh, really tight, yeah. really, you know, they, they got to know each other from those early road trips. Not only the early road trips, because we we also had the seven games. People forget that we played seven exhibition games on the road, and then you you, you put that in with the start of the season. It was a it was an incredible journey for our players to go through, um, and they did real real well. Um, and I think our coaching staff and our players became closer, and it, it, it has helped us in the second part of the season. You also said that you felt that Mullet Arena, yeah. the intimacy of it, was going to be part of this story. Yeah. And man, were you right. You know, when we move on to the big rink and our new rink's built, everybody from from this era is going to talk about the mullet. Yeah. Oh my God, I was so close. Remember those games? I felt like I was a part of the game. It's a special place. There's one place like that in the entire NHL where you can go watch a game that close and that intimate feeling. And our players have felt it. They, they have shown their love by how hard they played. And I think it's a hard place to play, and I, and I love that about it. Uh, but Bill, you, you're in a rebuild. Yeah. And they're tricky. Yeah. And the one thing you can't ever put into the equation, I think, is the human element. Because coaches yeah. want to coach, and players want to play. Yeah. But that's, a, that's part of this tricky equation, isn't coaches it? Coaches want to win. Coaches want to win, yeah. Coaches want to win. They come into the rink to win. Uh, players the same way. Yeah. Um, our players are hungry players. Um, and I think it's it's a credit to the coaching staff, it's a credit to the players that bought into the, this. You know, they're not concerned with our rebuild. Um, that, that they're, they're, they want to make a statement and uh, I've always felt like you don't want to take the fight out of your team. So, you know, as we go through the process, right now when we come down the stretch, um, you know, we're, we're sticking with the same things that we've always talked about. Get to practice early, eat properly, get your skills in, watch video, do the extra, prepare to play. Um, you know, be a better player, be a better teammate, dive into that process. And we haven't changed from the start of the season to the second half of the season. When you go to the, uh, the GM meetings, yeah. armed with 47 draft picks yeah. in your back pocket, what is that like when those guys are looking at you walking into the room? Well, they tease me a little bit about the picks, you know. What are you going to do with all those picks? And then I look at them and I... I go, it smells like jealousy a little bit. <laughs> You're jealous of those picks. Um, I, it's great power to have those picks. There's a lot of things you can do with them. You can only draft players. You can move up in the draft, or you can go buy players. It gives you a lot of different options. And with the picks pushed back that far, um, it gives you some time uh, to wheel and deal. 
I, uh, I was thinking about you one night, and this is just the, uh, the nature of this sport. Yeah. You come here with a plan, you've impl implemented the plan, it's going, and then they start winning. And, it, yeah. and you can't help it, and players can't help it. You become the guy with the, bat, with the black hat. Yeah, yeah. But you, you understand that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I watch yeah. them walk by you, and they live in the moment. Yeah, and you have to look ahead, don't you? Yeah, yeah, and that and that's my job is to look down this, you know, not yeah. only one year out but five years out. Now we say everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> so you look, know, look. you know the, uh, but our thought process is no matter where we're picking in that draft, we have to find players. But did Clayton Keller exceed your expectations, and was a legitimate star born this year? Do you think has he gone to that step? You know, Kells is, I'm, I'm proud of him because I, you know, I, I came at him, you know, after after the first year together and I said, listen, I've, I've seen you since you've been in Pee Wee. You've been the best player in every game I've ever watched you've been in, from from that to the national program, to the world juniors, to, to when you played at BU. Um, and he had kind of hit a lull. And, I, you know, I think he embraced my words. I think he went back and, and really worked at becoming a bigger, stronger, better player. Um, and you could see that last year. And what you like about it is the fact that he had a gruesome injury. He, he didn't miss a game this year. He came back. And not only that, he's a better player um, than he was last year. It's, it's been an impressive season. And you can see his confidence, right? His confidence has grown. And that's a credit to not only his teammates, but it's also a credit to the coaching staff. And it's a credit to Kels in taking that step. From all of us here at Bally Sports, a tip of the hat to Bill Armstrong for his candor and accessibility as our broadcast partner. It's essential to help tell the story of his team. We'll take a break here on the Coyotes Insider. When we come back, we'll look back at the plays of the month. Michelli across, Boyd scores! One goal game! Well, welcome back to our final edition of the Coyotes Insider. We're hanging out here inside the team shop at the Scottsdale Ice Den. You know, I think it's important for us at times to always pause and remember the high-end skill, the elite skill that so many of the Coyotes possess these days. There's nothing like the talent level in the National Hockey League circa 2023. So in that spirit, one last time, our plays of the month, or as we call them, momentos sensacionales. Cuenta perfecta, rumbo a la red. El disparo es bloqueado por Domelka. Va rumbo a Keller, tiene espacio, dispara, le pega al poste y entra. Clayton Keller le da la ventaja a los Coyotes 1 a 0. Y aquí vamos, a la izquierda, ahora al centro y es Kraus con el golazo. Lawson Kraus empata el juego así de rápido. Aquí viene Keller, encuentra Schmaltz y eso es un gol de los Coyotes. A la perfección, Keller encontró a quien buscaba y los Coyotes toman la ventaja 1 a 0. De regreso a Mojo a la mitad del hielo. Se lo entrega a Michelli, quien pasa a Kraus y Kraus no la piensa dos veces. Kraus eleva el puck y aprovecha esta jugada de power play y empata el juego. Excelente jugada. Kraus entra por el centro. Se anima y lo tapan. Ingram, Ingram, chasa Sorelli. Nick Schmaltz encuentra a Keller. Ahora a su derecha. ¡Wow! J.J. Moser con autoridad. Cuéntele otra Moser y ahora la diferencia es de solo un gol. Buena combinación. Termina con Keller. ¿Quién lo hace ver fácil? Este chavo es increíble. De regreso a la línea, ahora al frente. Y es Christian Fisher que levanta su mano. Los Coyotes demostrando de qué están hechos. Keller se acerca, dispara y falla. El rebote es para Schmaltz y esta sí va a contar. Schmaltz no iba a dejar que esta posesión se desperdiciara. Rodean a Stitcher, ahora es Machelli. Se acerca, se lo pasa a Hayton y ahí está. La victoria en tiempo extra para los Yotes. Machali se viene acercando, va a disparar y anota. Es el número 63 y se llama Matías Machali y acaba de poner el juego 3 a 1. 
Nick Schmaltz lo trae, lo entrega Keller. Keller la piensa, pero decide pasar al otro lado de regreso al Schmaltz. ¡Y ese es gol! Le dieron la vuelta completa y funcionó. Keller a Schmaltz, la combinación perfecta. Lo saca de la esquina. Pero es interceptado por Kraus. Dispara, falla. Va y Mackie con el rebote. De regreso al centro. ¡Gol! Jack McBain acaba de empatar esto. Keller, suave, lo manda en la dirección del tráfico. Y es Travis Boyd que dice, gracias, caballero. Fisher, ahora con Boyd. Y anota. Boyd vino a jugar. Es su segundo del periodo. Keller rápido por el hielo. Ahora con Schmaltz. De regreso a Keller. ¡Golazo! ¡Golazo por parte de Keller! ¿Qué más podemos pedirle a estos dos? As always, we were just trying to capture the spirit of the thing. Let's move on here in our Coyotes Insider, and it's time for the last Coyotes trivia question of the year. And it's a good one. Entering this season, which player held the Coyotes record for most points in a season? A, Redeem Verbata, B, Clayton Keller, C, Keith Kachuk, or D, Ray Whitney? The answer, when we return. Well, let's revisit our Coyotes trivia question. Here we go. Entering this season, which player held the Coyotes record for most points in a season? Was it A, Redeem Verbata, B, Clayton Keller, C, Keith Kachuk, or D, Ray Whitney? The answer, the former captain, Keith Kachuk, C. Kachuk posted 86 points during the 1996-97 season, the Coyotes' first year in the Valley, 52 goals he scored, surpassing the mark of 50 and reached two years prior in Winnipeg. Still hanging out inside the Ice Den Scottsdale in our final Coyotes Insider, and here we are in front of the Shane Doan rink, and I think he'd appreciate this story more than anyone. We think it's important to understand always the totality of a pro sports franchise, and it isn't always about the final product on the playing field or on the ice. It's also about the total commitment to the community at large. And the Coyotes have been in lockstep with that since day one. And even this year, in such a difficult transition season, they still found a way to give back.
Bravo to the Arizona Coyotes. When we come back, our final segment of the final show and a look back to Mullen Arena or the party barn. Hey, look behind me, another crowded sheet of ice here in the Valley of the Sun. We're back at the Ice Den Scottsdale. This is our final segment of our final installment of the Coyotes Insider. And we figured the best way to wrap up our coverage is a look back to Mullet Arena, the most intimate setting in recent NHL history, as Bill Armstrong alluded to, or as Jody Jackson told us, the party bar. The word is out. Mullet Arena is the place to be. It's a party here. They call it the party barn for a reason. Aptly named the party barn with fans dubbed Coyotes Crazies, it's an NHL hockey game with unparalleled atmosphere. And that was the challenge for Natel Gentili as she tried to plan the in-game experience this season. The building is so small and intimate that it works in our favor because it's constantly loud, it's constantly energetic, it's constantly full. So everything we had to change in the show was to build the energy. So I actually threw out my old playbook and changed everything based upon what we got coming here. The result has been amazing. I I've had so many people ask me and I tell them, I'm like, think of like college atmosphere at an NHL level. Every game in the smaller arena feels like a playoff game. It's so loud and the energy is insane that like Quick Draw and I, we just feed off of it. DJ Iceman and DJ Quick Draw don't just feed off of it, they create it. I'm the guy, if you ever hear the howl, that's me. I've been doing it for 17 years. I'm the guy that presses the howl. Um, also during the games and we try to do sound effects, anything to get the crowd going into it, you know, get the excitement up at certain points in the games. Um, that's where we work back and forth together, me and Ice. Oh, they're 100% the show. So there's a lot of things that we can put in the show, but the main difference maker is the music that's played. If you go to a club, your whole energy is set based off the music that they're playing. Or if you're doing anything and you want to set your energy, you pick what kind of music you want to play. So the DJs, they run the energy of the building. We can script things, but it takes them to make it what it is. Biggest 43 by the point the first. Coyotes going on the power play! The howl, the goal song. I also like power plays, uh, getting the sound effect out. Paul Sura, you know, Coyotes going on the power play! You know, and then the howl, it's just a cool little moment. If we're on a power play, we're gonna play a hype up song right after PA Paul does a, a loud read over the PA uh, announcements. Smack a huge, like, house, heavy house banger and hopefully we score right after that. <laughs> then there are warm-ups where the players run the show, texting Ice what songs will get them hyped up for the game. One player in particular. Uh, it's gotta be the all-star, Kelly, for sure. O'Brien, he sent a few out there. But yeah, all the young guys, they just want the, the Migos, they want the Drakes, they want the Jack Harlows. And I mean, I love all that music too, so they just want to feel it, get hyped up, and come deliver for all of us. This is a dream job for the DJs. They both have ties to the Coyotes that run deep. My journey with the Coyotes started in 96 when they came out here. Um, moved to Arizona from LA and my dad took me, my parents took me to a Coyotes game and I just fell in love with the sport. Like I played hockey 10 years myself, uh, like Kachuk, Jeremy Roenick, those are all my favorite players from the 90s and doing the whiteouts and the playoff runs. I grew up on hockey, moved to Arizona, just was so blessed to get this job with the Coyotes. And uh, hockey and music is my life, you know, so yeah, I fit right in. <laughs> and for Natel, who was a gymnast at ASU, it's come full circle being back on the campus of her alma mater. There's a bit of Sun Devil in the Coyotes show. We'll play, we'll play Thunderstruck on ASU Coyotes Unites, and I'm in my booth like going for the football tradition. Um, so it's cool to have like little winks at ASU since we are on their campus and we do have a lot of their students at our games. It kind of also brings up the energy because if you play to what people already know, you're kind of taking a little shortcut. 
There's something for everyone. Reverse retro nights, I gotta admit, that's my jam. Dance music from the 90s and early 2000s. But any given night, country, rock, hip hop, salsa, and house music. It keeps the mullet rocking and fans wanting to come back. So that's what we're trying to do for people. Even if it is a Tuesday night, you want people to be loud, you want them to be energetic, and you want them 10 years later to say, oh, I went to this game once at Mullet Arena and the Coyotes, like, it was amazing, the energy was crazy. So that's our main goal, is to just make sure it's a memorable night every night somebody's in the stands. You know, with the season coming to an end, that doesn't mean that the story of the Coyotes this year will end with it. Don't forget, there's the referendum for the citizens of Tempe, there's the NHL draft, and of course, free agency. And believe it or not, before long, late in the summer, guys will start trickling in for informal workouts right here at Ice 10 Scottsdale. It's sort of hockey's version of pitchers and catchers. So remember, track it all on the Coyotes website and their social media pages and platforms. Same for us here at Bally Sports. So for all of us at the Coyotes Insider, including our executive producer, Jerry Romo, who is out on the ice, photojournalist Aaron Bryan, who you can't see, the entire staff, and for Jody Jackson, I'm Todd Walsh. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon, maybe at the ring. Keller moving in. Clayton Keller, one of the two game winners in OT for Hayden. He shoots. Stop. Rebounding stop.